In today's day and age, if you are a private practice therapist who does not have a website, it is going to be extremely challenging to get clients. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your website as a therapist in private practice. Before we get started, my name is Kelly Stevens. I'm the owner and founder of Private Practice Pro, and I teach therapists how to build successful six-figure private practices. Private practice marketing truly is one of my passions. I have a whole online course all about how to market your private practice. You can check out that link below, but for right now, let's get into step one of building your private practice website. Step number one of building your private practice website is deciding on your budget. As a therapist, you have so many different options when it comes to building your website. And now more than ever, you can build a website very cheaply, right? You can host and build a website for like $30 a month or you can go all the way up to, I don't even know, $10,000 a month on custom builds and all sorts of things. I often recommend for therapists just starting out to make sure that you have a website that is professional and really nice and really speaks to your ideal client, but you do not need to break the bank in order to do that. However, you do need to decide what your budget is for your private practice website. And before you go any further in this video, I want you to pause here and just think to yourself, okay, what am I willing to spend on a website? That takes us to step two, which is deciding whether or not you are going to DIY your website or whether you're going to hire someone to do it. Now, this step is really important because as a therapist, you might already be working in an agency or treatment center. You might already have your own private practice. And let's be honest, many of us are not web designers, right? Many of us didn't go to school to learn how to build a website. That being said, there are so many beautiful template sites and websites that are kind of easy to build if you're a little bit tech savvy. So in this step, you need to decide are you willing to invest some time in building a private practice website for yourself or are you going to hire somebody? Here's how I would make that decision. If you're somebody that likes kind of tinkering with things online, maybe you've experimented with things like Canva or maybe you've built a website before or you really like social media and design and you think, you know what, I can maybe do this. Then you might consider trying to build your own website. If you're somebody that says, you know what, Kelly, I hate building websites. I have no idea how to work technology. I don't even know how to mark my smartphone. There's no way I can do this. All right. If that is you, then I would really encourage you to outsource your website. There are going to be so many things that you need to do when you're setting up your private practice. And when you're marketing your private practice, I go over those in my online courses and you can take a lot of time really doing and digging into those other tasks if you aren't spending hours on your website. If that is you, it is completely okay to hire somebody. I'm going to link down below to one company that I really like that builds therapist websites called the passive practice. They do this all day long. So if you want to hire someone, that's who I'd recommend. If you say, you know what, I want to do this myself, then let's keep going. So if you have decided I want to do this website building myself, then the next thing you need to do and step three is picking a website builder or some sort of program that helps you build your own website. Now there are a huge range of them and I'm going to break down some of the options right now, but know that there's lots you can choose from. The first website builder you could do is you could choose to go with something like what simple practice offers where they build therapist websites. You get a little bit of customization, but not a lot and it kind of integrates with your simple practice account. I'm going to go ahead and link their website building tool here. And this is really great. If you're somebody who really does not have a ton of design experience and who just kind of wants to be able to plug in your text and go. The second website builder that I often recommend to therapists is Squarespace. Squarespace is also very easy to use. However, there is a little bit of a learning curve. 
I kind of go deeper into that learning curve and what you need to do to learn Squarespace in my Marketing for Therapists course, which I'll link below. However, the wonderful thing about Squarespace is they have tons of beautiful templates, they have designs, and they make it really easy. They have tons of online tutorials that teach you how to build your website. And personally, when I built my first private practice website, I built it on Squarespace. They're beautiful, they're nice, they're clean, they look great. And if you start looking through their site, you might recognize some of the look of Squarespace as being pretty typical of small businesses. Another website option is Wix. A lot of people really like it. I personally have never used Wix, but I know a lot of therapists who have and have really enjoyed it. I'm more of kind of like a Squarespace person, but Wix is also a really great option. The other option to consider is WordPress. WordPress does offer a lot more customization and a lot more options and is really known for being kind of a premier website building template, but the learning curve is steep. I'll tell you behind the scenes when I built Private Practice Pro, I had a custom WordPress site built for me. And although I manage that site now, I have had to have a little bit of a learning curve on it and hasn't always been easy. So if you are looking for an easy option, I might not choose WordPress. Once you've decided on a website builder, we need to go to step four, which is really picking a good domain name. Now I'm somebody who's always enjoyed buying my domain names from either Google domains or from GoDaddy. I'll link both of those below here. But I personally think picking a domain is one of the hardest things that you can do. Now, one really big temptation is to just pick a domain name that is your name, right? Often we as therapists will pick something like Kelly Stevens therapy. I'll tell you in my first private practice, that is what I did. Cause I thought that's what everybody did. There are some pitfalls to doing that. One of those pitfalls is if you ever decide to open a group private practice and it's based on your name, although in theory that seems okay. I often find that group practice owners end up changing their name to something more kind of generic or like South coast counseling or something like that so that they can have associates or other pre-licensed therapists who feel like they can get behind that name and that they're just not supporting a brand that's based on their own personal name. And that gets kind of weird. Right. And sometimes people will say to me, well, I could just change my domain name later if that's the case. Although that is true, I want you to realize that when you build a website, you are also building a lot of search engine optimization. And one thing that Google really looks for in websites is how long it has been around. So although you could change your domain name later, that also could hurt you in terms of SEO. So one thing to think about when you're naming your private practice and when you're picking your domain name really is, is this domain name going to last me in the long term? You also need to think, is this domain name available, right? A lot of times that first choice domain name that you think, and you've been pondering for so long, it's not available. So you might want to come up with a big list of things that you might be interested in using as your domain. The last thing I want you to think about when you're picking your domain name really is, are you interested one day in creating online digital products, maybe workbooks or an actual book, um, online courses and that sort of thing. If you are interested in creating digital products one day, you might want to pick a name that you could later trademark. I have a podcast episode on this, which you can check out here where there's more about trademarking, but I would really think to yourself first, if you want to create a larger digital brand one day out of your practice when picking your domain name. Now I know that all feels like a lot. If you just want a simple website and you don't want to think about any of that, that's okay too. The next thing you need to do is you need to go in and build your website. Now, a lot of you might be saying, I don't have time to do this. And I'll tell you when I built my first website, I was still working as an employee of a group private practice. And I kind of put off building my website before I realized I could just build it slowly while I was still in that full-time job. I was building it on Squarespace actually. And I would go home in the evenings. I'd be watching TV. I would slowly teach myself how to do it. And that was a good way of doing it without any pressure. And just know when you're building a website, you don't have to make it 
public. So if you're not ready to leave your current job, you can still start working on that website. Even if you're not planning to leave for a year or two, you can really work on learning how to do this. And this can be a great thing to do when you're pre-licensed as well. The benefit of working on your website ahead of time is it gives you time to build some content, build some blog posts, and really get clear on who you are serving and your ideal client. If you want more info on how to really craft your private practice website page to page and what should be on each page, I actually have a free 52 page guide that I'll link below completely free. And it breaks down literally section by section, what you should have on each page at the very minimum. I recommend having an about page, a resources page, a contact page and a blog. I also like when therapists have a page that's about therapy and what the therapy experience is like for them. Some therapists will choose to use kind of an online scheduler on their website. I personally, the one I like the best is from simple practice and then their sites you can actually integrate so that your calendar is in your website. If you want clients to be able to book directly with you from your website, other therapists will say, you know what? I just want them to call me or email me and that's perfect too. The last thing I want you to do when you're setting up your private practice site is to sit down and write five or six blog posts that really speak to your ideal client and maybe take some time to learn a little bit about search engine optimization. If you want a video on a full tutorial of search engine optimization, let me know in the comments below. But one thing I'll say is that blogging is really important for search engine optimization and including keywords that you might want to rank for on Google. I personally use a tool called keywords everywhere. I love it. It makes it really easy to incorporate keywords into my blogs. I'll link that below as well so that you can get started, but having four or five blogs kind of on the back burner gets you started in posting them. And even if you're only posting once a month, having content that's new on your website that really speaks to your ideal clients and their pain points is so, so important. I promise you setting up your private practice website does not have to be as complicated and as tricky as some people make it seem. Just start small, start tinkering with things after work in the evenings, see what happens. I bet you it's going to go better than you think you want more videos like this, make sure to like, and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.